What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to another ESO video. Today we've got a really good one. It's actually a Q&A um, that the author of this was able to, Alessio Palumbo, was able to actually sit down with Rich Lambert and talk about a lot of the stuff um, with scribing and, you know, the hands-on experience and all that stuff. So I'll be linking this article down below. Please go support um, this gaming journalist. This is really important. I do want to read through this, but I also want you guys to bring traffic to this article and stuff. That's always super important with this kind of stuff, right? I also got this article off of a Reddit post, which I will be linking down in the description as well. If you are interested, you can go on there, leave comments on the Reddit post, all that kind of stuff, okay? So it is called Elder Scrolls Online, Gold Road Hands-On with Scribing and Q&A with Rich Lambert, our creative director. This is by Alessio Palumbo. This is the like the most badass picture I've ever seen, honestly. This is my desktop background 100%, and it's actually the banner on my YouTube and stuff right now because I think it's so sick. This is like their image for like the commemoration of the 10-year anniversary, right? So he said, earlier this year, ZeniMax revealed Elder Scrolls Online had registered over 24 million accounts since its launch. Now, that does not mean active players. That means that 24 million accounts have been created. However, the length of which those people played, if there were bots, is unknown, right? But there have been a ton of accounts that have been created. The game is also closing in on $2 billion in customer spending. It was nominated for a BAFTA award last year, and the studio says it is the largest cross-platform RPG on consoles. As the game now celebrates its 10th anniversary with the addition to GeForce Now, and with a free play event live through April 9th on all platforms, Zoss also discussed the upcoming launch of the new chapter, Gold Road, due on June 3rd on PC and Mac, and June 18th for PlayStation and Xbox consoles. As previously announced, it will include the usual set of features that fans have come to expect. 30 hours of story content, the Westfield Zone, which is comprised of three different looking biomes, the Gold Road, the Valenwood Annexation, or Dawnwood, and the Colovian Highlands. The hub city of Skingrad, which Elder Scrolls buffs will remember from Oblivion. The new Lucent Citadel 12-player endgame trial, or raid, if you're coming from another MMO. Similar to, um, or I'm sorry, similar in scope to the Sanity's Edge trial added with Necrom, it is an ancient but recently rediscovered Daedric Vault that houses a new dangerous energy resource. Kashargo, a Khajiit member of the Scribes of Mora, will ask players to remove it. Rich said the team outdid themselves with Lucent Citadel, achieving things he didn't believe possible in the engine and introducing brand new mechanics. We also have a new type of world event, tons of loot, achievements, cosmetics, and some new music. And the music in this game is incredible. That's that's like an underplayed and understated, underappreciated part of this game. But the music is just banger after banger after banger every single year, seriously. All right, there are, however, two changes. The first is that the two new companions won't arrive with the Gold Road chapter, having been moved to the Q4 update. The second is the big new feature of the chapter, the scribing system a precursor to the fabled spell crafting that was promised shortly after the launch of ESO. The developers allowed press and the influencers to check out the new system by accessing a preview server where we could select a maxed out character with scribing already unlocked. You'll have to get through a storyline first when playing on the live server. Um, there's going to be a lot of people when the PTS goes live that are going to show us how to unlock scribing where to get all the grimoires, which are basically the different pieces, the different slots that you can get um, for each of the scribing skills. So keep that in mind. Um, I am not going to play on PTS for anything other than experimenting with, with new builds. So I'm gonna see if I can get a maxed out character with scribing already unlocked. So I will play with that a little bit, but I don't wanna spoil the story and the experience of finding out how to get these grimoires for myself. Like I like doing all that kind of stuff on launch with everybody. And also all that stuff typically gets really ironed out during PTS. So if you are unhappy with something during PTS, I feel like a lot of people get really, really overly emotional and vocal about it. Um, and a lot of times it gets fixed, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I like to see what we're getting on launch and run with that. And then if I have any concerns at that point, that's kind of when I like to, to bring stuff up. But um, outside of that, if there's like conceptual things or like mechanical things, like the lack of an AOE taunt in this game, and they're vehemently against that. Like I'll speak out against that, you know, but going crazy over one change in week one, is like, I don't know. I don't know. It's likely to be changed, so... 
Not a big deal. Anyways, scribing takes place at the altar of the Scholarium. Upon interacting with this crafting station, you'll be presented with a list of the grimoires you have at your disposal. These are the base skills you are then able to tweak. There's only one per weapon type. Dual wield gets traveling knife, a thrown enchanted dagger with a range of 15 meters that returns to the player after a short delay, hitting additional enemies in its path. Vault is the bow skill, effectively a backflip executed after firing at your own feet. The healer's restoration staff gets Mender's Bond, a tether between you and an ally that lasts for 12 seconds and a range of 20 meters. Elemental Explosion, the destruction staff skill, conjures a blast of a 10 meter radius and a range of 28 meters. Hanks will have Shield Throw, a Captain America-like skill, I'm so pumped for this, where the shield is thrown and returns to your character, for their one-handed and shield builds. Lastly, Smash drags your two-handed weapon on the ground and then hits an eight-meter cone in front of the player. Then there are the World Guild and Alliance skill lines that the Elder Scrolls Online are very um, that the Elder Scrolls Online players are very familiar with. Soul Magic within the World section is the only skill line to get two scribing skills. Soul Burst is an area of effect explosion centered around the character with a radius of eight meters while Wield Soul launches concentrated magic to a target at up to 28 meters away. So I think what, what's good about this, I'm not surprised now that we're hearing about it that Soul Magic is getting two, given that it only has two abilities total. So I think that that's nice, but I would rather have seen, and this is not complaining, I don't want to say rather. So let me, let me rephrase that. I think we're then, as a result, I would expect us to get a scribing skill for all of the world and... Um, just the lines that have active skills in general. Maybe not the class lines initially, because there could be some balance issues with that, because every class wouldn't have access to that, right? But, you know, Undaunted, Vampire, Werewolf, Sigic, these, these skill lines that are guild and world skill lines that have active abilities, I do think we're going to get that. I also think because we have two skills in Soul Magic, I think it's fair to assume that they could have multiple skills added to all the skill lines in the future, right? I think it's fair to say every weapon skill line could get a second one in the future. Um, but keep in mind, if they do go the route of adding to class skills, they have to do seven at one time, right? So that's going to be a lot. I think they're going to fill out the rest of the skill lines, like the ones that I just mentioned prior to that, but that would be cool. It would just be a big undertaking, right? All right. Um, the Fighter's Guild skill, Torchbearer, conjures a flaming torch that sweeps three times in front of the player in an eight-meter radius. The Mage's Guild skill, Contingency, triggers runes if you cast any ability while under half magicka or stamina. Lastly, the Assault skill line gets Trample, which conjures a charging horse. When you go to customize these skills, you'll have three scripts, starting with Focus, which determines if you want to deal damage, and if so, what types. Heal, get a damage shield, generate ultimate, or inflict effects like taunt, immobilize, pull, knockback, and the like. Then there's signature, which adds things like damage over time, healing over time, life siphon, snare, damage reduction, resource restoration, but also very specific things depending on the skill line. For example, soul collapse consumes a soul gem to deal 8% of the enemy's max health as oblivion damage. It also deals up to 100% more damage to foes under 50% health. This part of the effect can only occur every three seconds. Soul Infusion, on the other hand, generates three ultimate up to once every three seconds. Both Soul Collapse and Soul Infusion consume a soul gem from the player's inventory. Lastly, there are Affix scripts, which may grant your character a minor or major buff or inflict a minor or major debuff or set them off balance. So when we really initially got kind of the look at scribing they told us about primary secondary and tertiary grimoires so that has been replaced now it looks like with these with these different um with these different terms which is great so you have focus which is the primary right and then what's the second one signature which is secondary and then you have the last one affix so focus i literally just said it i'm blanking Focus, signature, and affix. Okay, cool. Very cool. Do note that there are limitations to the system. For instance, upon selecting the healing focus script for one of the soul skills, the damage over time and soul collapse signature scripts were blocked from selection. And the same goes for the breach, 
defile, and cowardice affix scripts. This is likely due to balance reasons, and it makes sense. Okay, so it's not like a perfect, you know, when they showed us Vault initially, we had seven focused options, we had seven um, affix options, and we had seven of the secondary options. I literally, I don't know why I cannot remember the word for that. Good God, signature. Focus, signature, and affix. I'm, scr I'm struggling, dude. So it looks like you do not always have all of them available, and they often depend on what you choose before it, right? So when you choose the focus, you may have five of the seven of the signature options available versus all seven. And then when you choose your signature, you may have three or four based on that of the affix selections. Makes sense. That's fine. I think that's, that's totally fine. I think that's how they're ultimately avoiding like the AOE taunt situation. Even so, the developers said there are over 4,000 combinations available. However, in practice, I've noticed that some made way more sense than others. While this is somewhat expected, it's good to go in understanding that this is not at all a completely freeform system. Still, it will almost assuredly increase the variety of player builds, which is always a win in my book. Yeah, so I mean, there's obviously going to be some combinations that are throwaways where you're just like, you would never use it in a million years. And it's not because it's not meta. It's because it like wouldn't be effective. Like you would just see it and be like, ah, this is this is not going to work. Right. And I think that that was expected, given that you have so many combinations, some are going to be throwaways, some are going to be really good. And the thing is, too, ESO does not have a like there's not a build for each class that is so good that it is incredible across all types of content, all fights. You have different fights. So if you're a tank, for instance, you're going to have different setups for different bosses and different raids. You're going to have different setups based on dungeons, based on pugging, based on what you're doing, right? And so having a system like this where you can keep the same skill on your bar and maybe change some of this stuff is pretty cool. Now, what I would be curious about, obviously, I think that this is going to stick with the armory system. So if you create different combinations for a skill, I think that people are going to be able to have that. However, I'm curious if they're going to add some sort of assistant in the future where you don't have to go to this crafting station of sorts to do it. Because that's going to be huge if people are able to switch around their scribing skills on the fly, right? The absence of any scribing skills for the Alliance War support skill line, as well as Sigic and Undaunted skill lines, stings a bit. But Zenimax will likely add those at some point in the future, as hinted in the Q&A below. Scribing had to start somewhere, after all. I think 11 is pretty good for, for the first time out. One thing I'll say is that the animations of these scribing skills are not always up to par with the others in the game. Though that may change by the time Gold Road Chapter is released in June. Interesting. By the way, there's also a visual customization side that comes with the new system. This is, this is entirely separate from scribing. It's called styling. The preview server allowed us to automatically unlock the following cosmetic changes for existing skills. Barrier red, or I'm sorry, barrier blue, cleave red, dawnbreaker dark purple, entropy yellow, expert hunter red. Um, okay, force shock negative. That'll be interesting. Um, Grand Healing Purple, Low Slash Orange, Mage Light Green, Meteor Orange, Poison Arrow Red, Regeneration Blue, Reverse Slash Red, Snipe Red, Soul Trap Purple, Trap Beast Illuminating, that's cool, Vigor Blue, okay, Wall of Elements Purple, Warhorn Orange, Weakness to Elements Purple, and Whirlwind Orange. So for my tank... So we'll have barrier, which is blue. Let me see what else we've got in here. Um, I don't really use low slash, but that's orange. Okay. And then we've got vigor blue. So we've got vigor blue and barrier blue, so that's nice. And then we've got wall of elements purple and warhorn orange. So one thing that I would like to do on my Templar is kind of get everything in a holy or at least like a flame kind of look. I think that that would be pretty interesting, um, especially given like the classing. Like if you look at like the class set and stuff, it's kind of glowing with this holy light. I would like to get everything looking like that. That would be cool. Just so everything's consistent with my Arcanist, I'd like everything to be green. With my Sork, I'd like everything to be kind of lightning or blue, right? So there are definitely um, going to be a ton of options and they're only going to add to this. I'm definitely going to want to collect every single one of these things, obviously. 
but it's still super cool. All right, now we finally get into the questions, okay? With the 10th anniversary of Elder Scrolls Online, were there any discussions about an ESO Classic server? So if you guys aren't aware, a Classic server would basically be a separate server or like a gameplay server where you can go back and play the game at its original state. So World of Warcraft has been out for 20 years. Back in 2019, they released Classic servers because people really like the classic feel of World of Warcraft. The problem with this is... Um, there are so many good quality of life changes that have happened that have made the game so much more enjoyable that I don't think ESO Classic would be that great. I think the only thing from ESO Classic that people may be interested in trying out again would be the Overland difficulty. That's it. Everything else I think is better. Literally everything. ESO Classic is interesting, and we've definitely talked about it a lot internally. My snarky response is always that nobody liked ESO at launch. I mean, a lot of people did like it, but it wasn't as successful as it is now. So I don't think that people would be super excited to go back to 2014 ESO. I can agree with that. Just because like the reception of the game at launch, it was a buggy mess. It was a buggy mess. Now, you know, back to 2015, 2016, that's a little bit different. I think that would be a bit of a smoother state. There wouldn't be as many bugs, um, you know, but at the end of the day, I like ESO a lot better where it is now. A lot better. A lot better. Okay. WCCF Tech. Is there a limit on how many skills created with scribing you can equip at any one time? Well, you can only have five slots on each bar. Actually, technically six because there's the ultimates. That's the limit. So I guess that's alluding to the fact that maybe we'll have several new um, scribing skills built over time. Maybe we'll have enough to fill up our entire bar. That would be pretty cool. Do people need to own the Gold Road chapter to get scribed? Yeah, so anytime there's a new feature like that, um, that comes with a chapter, you always need the chapter to access it. So that's not surprising. What were the criteria for a bad ability in scribing when it comes to that compatibility filter? The one example I'll give is in that healing example, it was an AoE heal. It would be really bad if it was also an AoE damage ability. That would just be broken. Players would love it, but balance wise, it would be absolutely broken. It's a lot of those kind of rules that we're trying to establish for how that stuff works. Okay. Are skills created with scribing meant to be every bit as powerful as the best ones already available in ESO? Would it be problematic for you if many builds featured these custom skills? I mean, the hope is that builds incorporate these skills, right? That's why we're building the system. They're balanced to standards that we've already got in place. But the difference between the scribed abilities and those we've already given is that they're a lot more customizable. If your build, for whatever reason, doesn't have minor force, you can put that in there with one of those abilities. There's class scripts that do unique things based on the class. So the Arcanist one, if you put a class script on there, that ability will generate a crux for you. So if you don't want to use a crux spender, um, any of the crux spenders or builders that we've already got with the Arcanist, you have this here. It just offers a lot more flexibility to help plug holes in your build. So I wonder if there's going to be a scribing ability that the Arcanist can use that's going to be more effective than Beam. The reason Beam is so good is because it's a channeled ability, so you're not having to do your rotation. It does a ton of damage. Its cleave damage is insane, meaning its AoE damage is insane, and it just does a ton of damage. And you can do either a snare with more damage, or you can have a damage shield. So if, there's, if you can do anything sort of the same that spends Crux with one of the scribing abilities, it's going to be really good. What's the cost of changing a scribing skill? That's what the inks are for. You can get them in multiple places. They drop in the world, and you get a bunch for completing quests. We wanted there to be a little friction, but we didn't want it to be so painful that people would hoard these things and never change their abilities. That's the balance point we're looking at. Yeah, so this is one of the things that's probably going to get ironed out during the PTS, and this is something that could technically be a little controversial, and that's essentially that you're going to have to use a currency to customize these abilities. Now, is it one of these inks to customize the entire skill? Is it one per grimoire, right? Is it once only when you're changing it? Um, and also, he said you can complete quests and find them in the world. What does that mean? What is the drop rate? Is it something that's going to take up space in your inventory, or is this going to be a currency in your currency tab? These are all questions I think a lot of people are going to have um, going into it that we'll be able to find out soon. Are there any ultimate abilities available with scribing. I think I'll leave that up to you to all jump in and start looking at. Um, I purposely didn't go through and give an exhaustive list of things because I really wanted people to go in and start playing and experimenting with them. 
definitely take a look and see what you think. In particular, if you're really interested in seeing some of the fun things that you can do with it, take a look at Trample and what it does and compare that to which mounts you have favorited and see what happens. Okay. Can you scribe other trees like Undaunted? Just like uh, just the 11 ones that we have for launch, there's 4,000 combos right now. We couldn't do everything. The plan is to continue to support this like we do with all of our other systems in the future and add to it. Are you able to compare to the size of the new zones with any previous ESO zones? Is it similar in size to, say, Necrom or High Isle? It's almost exactly the same size as our last few chapters. It is one big zone. We didn't split it up amongst things, and there's, and there's tons of stuff to do. I only touched on the fact that there's 30 hours of story content in there, but it's got all of the trappings of a chapter. There's world bosses, delves, public dungeons. I didn't really touch on the New World events, which are called Miramore Incursions. They're really cool and different from anything we've done before. So yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff in this chapter. Since in our preview we'll have scribing already unlocked, we won't have a great idea of the progression. Can you talk about roughly how much time and effort it might take for someone to reach the point where we would be at the level we will be in the preview? Basically to max out and collect every single um, scribe in Grimoire. It's a pretty involved storyline. I think it's probably going to take you six or seven hours to play through, but there's also some other components uh, to this. For instance, the weapon skill lines, you can't scribe them until you've actually unlocked the skill line. So it seems like, this is interesting. So what it's sounding like to me is that you go through the storyline and you unlock the scribing system as a whole and not necessarily just scribing and then you have to find the grimoire. So if that's the case, that's pretty easy. Six to seven hours is nothing um, for a storyline. I'll definitely enjoy that. I'll be doing a playthrough of that in the future. So y'all um, be looking out for that. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty interested in... in how that's going to work, if we're going to actually unlock every single um, grimoire, or if we're going to need to, you know, actually find them out in the world, doing activities, achievements, whatever. Is there any new info you can give us about the PvP updates coming in the fourth quarter this year to ESO? Right now, we're focused on the chapter and trying to get all of that done and out there. We'll talk about it soon. Just be patient a little longer. PvP players have been patient for 10 years. Um, beside the color change, will the styling feature have other visual changes players can add in the future? Maybe. At launch, it's color, but part of the reason we built the system the way we did was so that we can expand it to things like that. A lot of questions we get from players are, hey, I'm a warden, and I've had the same bear forever. Can we get different pets? Sorcerers are like, hey, the winged twilight is getting old. I'd love to see something else. That's the idea behind the system. When we do that, if we do that, it is unknown right now, but we built the system um, to incorporate all of that feedback. So pets, pet skins are definitely coming in the future. If, say, a skill like Wall of Elements is scribed with a new effect, would a unique, like the Maelstrom Arena Flame Staff, keep its effect, or will it also change? So if you put the Wall of Elements style, the purple style on there, that will take priority. I don't think it'll actually change the physical properties of the abilities. It'll just change the visuals. Um, so I think this guy is getting a little bit confused with scribing and styling. So scribing is only going to be available on those new abilities that are being added, right? There's customizable abilities. You're not going to be able to um, customize skills that we already have in the game. So what he asks is if you customize basically Wall of Elements, which is a skill already in the game that is not linked to scribing, is something like the Maelstrom Arena staff going to follow its effects and amplify that? The answer is no because scribing is only going to be present for the brand new abilities that are coming into the game. Styling will color those abilities, right? But that has no effect on its, on its um, you know, actual effect, its damage effect in game, which is what Rich was saying. Okay. Since the West Wield was shown in Oblivion, how closely did you look at Oblivion's depiction when developing Gold Road? Are there familiar landmarks or references you wanted to bring in that we can look out for? There certainly are. Obviously, Skingrad is one of those because that's the hub city. We spent a long time going through that stuff and looking at what it could be. I'm really interested to see what players start to think about and postulate in terms of some of the lore that we put in there. Obviously, this jungle has kind of sprung up overnight. If you're into the lore side of things, there are books that say Cyrodiil was a jungle at some point. There's lots of neat, interesting tidbits that we've put into there that, players, um, that we want players to explore and interpret on their own. I'm pumped for that, dude. 
All right, you've previously said you're aware of a lack of guild content in ESO. Are there any updates in mind for this year or are they on their way further down the road? Nothing that I can think of. Well, okay. So in their commemoration 10 year roadmap, they actually said in 2025 that there is a guild recruitment event. I don't know what that means, um, but there definitely is something. So I'm curious why he said that. Was it always the plan to go to this location? No, a lot of that starts to shake out organically based on the realities of the story that we want to tell. One of the ways that we try to figure out where we go next and the story we want to tell is we look back at what we've done. We're just coming off of Necrom, which has this cosmic horror vibe. It's kind of alien, Cthulhu-like, if you will, and we wanted to do the opposite of that, something that was a little bit more grounded in the world, at least on the visual side of things. We ended up falling in love with this Westworld location. As we were going through that, one of the things we started talking about really, really early on is, well, if there's going to be forests, how do we make them cool? We've done a ton of that over the last 10 years and walking around in this giant, walking around in this giant green thing all the time is monotonous and gets boring. That's when we landed on the autumn colors. That fall setting just hits home and hits hard when you go in and look at that stuff. Are scribing grimoires earned across all zones, or are they all in Westfield or random drops anywhere? You'll get a bunch by completing the quest line. There's also a vendor that unlocks that you can buy them from, and then, yeah, scripts and grimoires can basically um, drop anywhere after that. Okay, so they drop all over the place. So you get some right when you get the storyline done, you unlock some, and there's a vendor that sells some. Very cool. I understand that there aren't major tech advancements in Gold Road, like NVIDIA DLSS, in DLAA or AMD FSR2 in previous ESO chapters and updates. Is there anything on that front coming in the future? We've added all kinds of rendering tech over the years, and we're going to continue to do that. We want to keep ESO as modern as we can. One of the things we've actually been focusing on is kind of shoring up that technology, but also making it more sustainable. We just went through a big initiative to reduce our carbon footprint. We looked hard at how much power is being consumed, where it's being consumed, and why it's being consumed. And that's where some of the things that shook out with update 41, where now if you go AFK for five minutes, your screen will darken on PC. That significantly reduces power when you're not playing. We've done things like this um, in the UI that reduce the amount of energy that your PC or console uses. We've been working on that kind of stuff, but are working on other technology too. It's cool. It's cool. I think being green like that is always a good thing. All right. Are there plans for additional scribing cosmetics being available in the Crown Store? um styling so he's getting confused with scribing silent are there any plans for additional styling cosmetic options being available in the crown store yes at launch our goal is to get the system out in a really really good state uh see this is this is what oh god dude okay so basically um this is going to be the first system in eso's history that was announced with a chapter, if the first chapter system um, that is going to be monetized. So they're going to have a ton of these in game that you can earn, um, and then they're going to sell some. That is a huge, huge, huge bummer to me. Um, we have so much stuff that's monetized in the game already, and like customized actions. I was really hoping that this was going to be something um, that was not monetized. So that sucks, honestly. That really sucks. Um, I know that they have to make money, but they monetize everything already. So that, uh, that just puts a bad taste in my mouth. Well, I hope that, you know, my favorite abilities are not in the crown store. That's all I'm going to say. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're trying to sell this stuff. So, you know, that some of the coolest styling options are going to be in the crown store, which really sucks. I'm only going to use the ones that are earnable in game, but what that means to me and how that affects me is they're taking the cooler ones and putting them in the store. So that sucks. The first batch of styles is 100% earnable in the game, but yeah, there will be other cosmetics that shake out over time, ones that you can earn and ones that you can purchase. That sucks. Do you have a favorite key moment in development or a favorite chapter over the 10-year journey? Um, oh, wow, that's a lot. There's been so many cool memories over the years. Probably the most proud moment was actually getting to launch. We worked on the game for seven years before we launched it. We learned a ton, and the launch was just the start. We had to learn and iterate on the game and choose what the game was going to be instead of this kind of weird hybrid that it was at launch. But if I have to pick a favorite moment, it's probably Orsinium. He said this during the live event too. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, you've mentioned before it would, be, it would be a miss to not include romance options in ESO at some point. Is there anything we can expect on that front this year? 
it would absolutely absolutely be a miss if we didn't do it at some point okay okay maybe that's what the housing option is going to be maybe it's going to be being able to romance or create families or something with house guests maybe maybe is there any plans for a second maelstrom arena like another single player arena that's an interesting question maybe Infinite Archive was kind of the next Maelstrom Arena, taking lessons learned from that. The Maelstrom Arena was actually supposed to be both a solo, duo, and group arena. That was what it was originally pitched as. We just didn't have the technology at the time to do it that way, so it became a solo arena. Infinite Archive, I think, turned out spectacularly. It allowed us to do things and reuse some things that we spent a great deal of time and effort on and allowed you to get that smaller scale grouping in there. But yeah, I wouldn't say no to having another Maelstrom Arena. It's some of my favorite content. Cool. Yeah, I'd love to see a single-player duo and four-person version of all the arenas in the game, including Infinite Archive. So yeah, that was great. That was really, really good. Um, thank you so much to Alessio for, for writing this up, for posting this. This was a great thing. Big takeaways that I got from this is we're going to be able to, with scribing, we're going to be able to unlock a lot of the grimoires just right after we finish the storyline. We'll have a vendor that we can get some from. And then you'll find others out in the world doing stuff, right? We're going to have to spend ink, which is the currency um, to actually engage with the scribing system. Hopefully that's going to be earnable and easily earnable, um, I should say. And you'll be able to keep that in your currency tab and not cloud up your um, inventory even more. Um, we're going to have over, we're just going to have a, a ton of styling options that are going to be free and earnable only up front. But it sounds like they are going to end up monetizing this in the future which sucks, in my opinion. You're still going to be able to earn more in the future, but they're also going to sell some, which I think is a big old bummer because now I'm, I'm a little less excited for the system because of that. Um, just because they've never monetized a in-game chapter system before. Um, and so I think a lot of us were pretty excited that we were going to be able to earn all this stuff. And now I'm afraid that hopefully they're not going to be selling like pet skins and stuff in the store. That would that would be, that'd be a huge L. It would be a huge L. Um, all in all, all the scribing abilities look fantastic. I'm excited to unlock them and get playing with them. If you guys enjoyed this content, please remember to like and subscribe. Please go visit this article and check it out. Um, make sure you bring some traffic to the website. It's awesome um, to support gaming journalists and all these people that go and do these Q&As for us because there are a lot of people that get to ask questions with the you know game developers and the creative director, Rich Lambert, that we don't always get to see. So it's really cool to see these these write-ups and stuff like that afterwards, right? If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe for more daily ESO content, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.